Hello everyone. So I've actually been doing, well, I've decided to actually do my job and find little issues in the buildings that I manage and fix them. And I've been going through and labeling what outlets go to what breakers. Turns out there's a fuse box that we didn't even know about that was giving us confusion. But I've been using my Flash Forge Adventure 5M Pro to print a good number of things. Now it's funny because I keep restarting this video because well, <laughs> I printed the wrong thing, and then I printed the wrong thing again on accident, but I think we're there now because this was open. Don't know what this is. See, that's the thing, like, in an artist space like this, because this is the LABC building in Lansdowne, in an artist space like this, people just shove things everywhere, and I came down here to find that this... Well, it's not supposed to be a closet. It's just that they wanted to have it sealed off for the the um, infrastructure stuff. Well, people kept stuffing stuff back there, so I had to spend a whole day carting stuff out, like broken mirrors and tabletops and stuff. And so I figured I'll put a door on there. And instead of making it hinge, which is, you know, when people see a door that hinges, they think, oh, I can open that and hide something in there so I don't have to pay, don't have to pay storage. And because uh, each one of these booths is rented and, and space is at a premium. So I decided to make a panel that lifts up. I 3D printed these. And now everything will be uh, available on my printables account. So we have these, which will hold this piece of plywood. And it's um, kind of funny that I noticed that this piece of plywood fits so perfectly that I had little incentive to rush suffice to say and it's been sitting here for a couple days now i 3d printed a like a, a latch well, actually first of all i 3d printed this thing that i would put on the back so it would also get cradled but i put this in and i realized i don't have screws short enough to go into this and plus it fits so well i just need a, something that'll hold it and something you can lift up. So I made a really long one thinking that we had full studs, but these are like half studs. I, I, I didn't even think to measure it. And so they weren't long enough. The screws would have been way back here. So I modeled a new one real quick, set it to print, and only whenever I came back to look at the printer, I realized I printed yet another one of these long ones. So we have four of those. Now, thankfully, thankfully those have become useful as if you put them upside down, they're hooks that I put my hat and safety equipment on, like my hearing protection, and I have two safety visors now, uh, face shields, so it works, but I don't want to have any more of those. But the updated one that I printed is like this. So let's get that installed. I figured I would film it while I only have one on because otherwise it takes two hands to put it in and that won't be so easy to film. Actually, to be honest, you could just pull it out. Neat. I kind of like how that works. Let's see. Good enough for me. That's a that's a pretty good $35 fix. And I did put polyurethane on this, so hopefully dirt doesn't stick to it too much. But yeah. As you can see, stuff is just going to appear here, so. Oh uh, yeah. Now I just hope nobody rests anything against it and breaks these. But um, public environments are always a pain. I'm trying to do all the little things that sure the person that inspects the buildings isn't going to, I guess the word is ding us for it, but it's good to do. Even though that isn't connected, 
I don't believe that's powered. Um, that might be powering through there, but I have a new plug 3D printing to fill that up. And then yesterday, I decided to tackle this circuit breaker panel that the, the cover had gone missing. These covers go missing a lot for some reason. And it was always exposed with these wires and that's just not safe. So I took this piece of Delrin. I've never worked Delrin before. Um, I don't really see anywhere to hook this. So I'm just gonna double-sided tape it on there. Now I took the weird tape signs that they, they, they put on here and they're gonna be on there for now, but that's not gonna be forever. So I'm 3D printing some angle pieces that I'm gonna use some 3M double-sided tape. And I think that should help quite a bit. So I'll stick to the sides. And you can easily take it off later, but just something to keep fingers away from it. Like, gosh, need something. Now look at this beautiful breaker panel. This is an absolutely gorgeous breaker panel and it's in use. It's actually in use. Look at these. They're so cool. If these ever have to be removed, I'm definitely keeping them. This is the kind of thing I would have in my living room. I just broke the top too long. Perfect, amazing. And now just for some information, I've been running that 3D printer at only 80% speed now, and that's gotten rid of all of the line issues and such. Oh, I like that. So I've cut off some sections of 3M double-sided tape. And one little trick is, so you're not messing with it in the moment, since you tend to kind of rip this stuff off anyway, I put it on, I, I don't fully press it on, I take this off and then I reapply it a little bit off center. So now when I go over here, it's a little bit easier to rip these off. Well, I was an idiot. So this pair of whisk scissors, it wasn't cutting right. I had to hold the two blades together. And so I started unscrewing and then I was like, oh no, no, I'll just screw it back together and put it in the shop. I, I screwed it back together and it snapped the screw. Ugh, why? The reason why I'm doing it like this is because, um, This panel was like, I think it's a different panel than it was here or something like that. Cause this front panel doesn't align with the back. And so like the screws, the screw mounting points are way down here for down here. And I figured, you know, I'll just use entirely non-conductive stuff and hook that in with that. Cause I didn't want to use any conductive stuff. 
And by the way, this is PETG, not PLA. Uh, for this kind of thing, I just, I've been using PETG. Oh, okay. That one is in fact not off. That is... Lights. Well, a lot of these that say off are on, so we're just copying it and leaving that be. I was going to replace the lock on this, but then I noticed there's a live wire going right through there, so I'm just going to seal that up and pretend that doesn't exist. Finally, I get to come here and the printer's not in use. So for the past three weeks, my friend who owns the building, he has been just going to town, 3D printing clips for these lights. So this building is a 1920s building and the, the town, uh, the, the borough uh, offered to install lights, but they were going to drill into the stone on the top of the building and, and, and just like hammer stuff. And I was like, no, 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 no. So my friend has designed these little clips that actually clip into the drip edge of the stone. And with a rubber band, it goes around the stone and you have one for each side. And it holds these professional grade or industrial grade LED Christmas lights. And they just kind of hug the brick wall. Actually, here is a video of it from the roof from like a half hour ago. Okay, so a while ago, Flashforge actually sent me some goodies. They sent me a bunch of filament. I feel so spoiled. So this saves me some money. I asked for some TPU and I think what I'm gonna do, let's use the flexible gray filament and the final thing for this video, this thing's printed hundreds of things in the past month. Um, the final thing for this video is I want to go to my workshop and grab an Irwin clamp. I believe they're Irwin clamps. And see about making replacement pads for them. Because the little rubber pads, that some have gone missing. Other ones have melted because I'll clamp something that I welded. I weld, it heats up, and it melts the, the clamp pad. And I think this TPU would be perfect for this. Little disposable pads that if I melt them again, I could sprint more. And they shouldn't use hardly, hardly any plastic at all. And that's where we can end off this video. But I will check printables and Thingiverse to see if anybody else has made those. Well, today is a joyous day. I see that somebody on printables has, in fact, made Irwin clamp pads. So... I'm don't e I don't even have to go to the workshop. I can just start this thing printing. My friend has been using HTPLA, which is heat treatable PLA, for those clips. And he runs it at a very, very high temperature so that it heat treats it. And it ends up being pretty stiff. I also got to use his Adventurer 4, although I need to replace the fan on it. I actually printed some pieces of conduit, believe it or not because I, I was building something and I didn't want to wait. Ooh, that is so interesting feeling. It is, it's like thread. Ooh, I should check the, uh, the print temperatures and stuff before. Okay. So I had asked Flashforge, why do you have such a strange method of changing the filament and honestly they said that it made sense at the moment but they've decided to change it so as it is now with the adventurer 5m pro you take the bowden tube out you snip it then you put the other one in so the idea is you you never end up with a um you never end up cold or hot pulling the hot end but I get it. It's a little bit weird. OK. 
Okay, now we can load. I do really enjoy this printer. It is about the same price as my bigger printer, my Anycubic Cobra Max. I believe, I believe that's what, yeah, I believe that's what it's called. And I think I'd be about as happy with this as I was with that. I've almost paid for that one from its own work. And um, so I just noticed this interesting pattern on here. But yeah, I've almost paid for that one. I would say this printer, actually, if I had purchased it, it would pay for itself. Now, one of the issues is this printer does, it does like to gob up a little bit. It doesn't affect the prints too much, but I, I just do notice that um, it might be the temperature we're running at. I don't know. Oh, gosh. I went with Ira S's. Erwin quick, quick grip grips and um, well, grip, quick grip pads and they, they are standing upright. It should take about four and a half hours. That's fine. she took it though. It's the one issue with this is that you don't know if it actually took it or not. I'm so impressed by the flash forwards that I actually brought my Anycuba Cobra Max over here because I no longer need that in my house. I'm not using it too much. Let's check out these TPU prints. <laughs> that actually worked a treat. Oh, there you are. Those are rubbery. Those are for the Erwin clamps. Oh, nice. <sighs> well, guys, that's pretty much it. That's been... I'm actually pretty happy with this machine, and I am evaluating it as if I have um, bought it myself. Uh, we've gotten a lot of use out of it. The The other big printer, I have a... You know, I've, kind of almost paid for it. I got it on a big discount. And apparently these ones you can get on a good good discount too. Eventually this will be going to my apartment and replacing the other one. Well, that's pretty much it for Flash Forge for this uh, time. I'm just really inc incredibly thankful for this tool because I've printed so many things. Thank you very much for watching. See ya. Well, look at that. It fits nicely. I uh, forgot to actually record a clip. So there we go. Like that. Yep. And it kind of grips well too.